Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, thank you for joining me today for this Q&A in regards to my reusable mask video that I put out about five days ago. Um, my name is Bree. It looks like there's a lot of new people here on my channel. So thank you so much for the overwhelming amount of support and positive comments and feedback on that video. I had no idea that that video was going to um, be such a huge success. I honestly expected just a few people to see it, but I really appreciate all the feedback. I thought I would do a quick video today um, just answering some of the comments that a lot of you guys have and I'm really sorry I wasn't able to personally address your comment that you left. There was a couple thousand comments I've been trying to respond to as many as I possibly can but I keep seeing a lot of the same questions come up over and over again so I thought I would just do this quick video today um, to kind of answer those questions and hopefully ease some concerns um, that people are having. So the number one question that I got from that video is, what are you using for filters? Um, again, I am not making any kind of recommendation as far as the effectiveness of any of these things I am about to mention. These are simply suggestions that people have made as far as what they are using personally to um, protect them when they go out. So use all of these things at your own discretion. Um, some of the items that people have been using for filters in these homemade masks are blue shop towels. I've heard of HEPA vacuum filters being cut up and used, um, as well as furnace filters, coffee filters, paper towels. Um, I did hear that some of the filters that people are purchasing in the hardware stores, such as the HEPA vac filters and furnace filters, some of them contain uh, micro shards of fiberglass. If that is the case, I absolutely would never recommend using any of those products. So I, I don't know this for certainty. I don't have any of these items on hand. So I cannot say either way whether these products do contain those items or not. Um, in the description box of the original video, I did have a link to Amazon for some disposable filters that I heard were working well for people. But now that source has been depleted and I guess they are no longer available to purchase. So that was probably the number one question I got asked about that video. So I hope um, I was clear and I answered that question appropriately. Again, check the description box down below and I will put a link in this video as well for the CDC guidelines um, for these homemade masks. Again, these masks are not to be meant or intended to use in the place of personal protective equipment. These are being used over the top of masks in the hospitals to prolong the use of the one-time use stuff that we're usually given um, that is in such short supply right now. Um, the second question that I got asked a lot for these masks was, how do I get my mask to fit like yours did in the video? You put it on, it looked like it fit great, and I put mine on and there's big gaps in the side and it doesn't feel like it fits right. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate now how to put this mask on and how to take it off. This has provided me with the best fit of the mask. Again, this mask is not going to be for everyone. There is hundreds of videos right now on YouTube from some amazing people and you might find a video or somebody that has created a mask that is gonna fit you or your loved ones better. So I highly encourage if this mask does not fit you to try something else. Um, I do have a couple other mask patterns, but again, style and fit is gonna depend greatly for every single person. So I'll show you now how to put this mask on that seems to provide me with the best fit, and hopefully this will clear up some of the confusion as far as that goes. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that the filter pocket in these masks is facing away from you, and that the loop is at the top. Pull the cotton part of the mask down so the loop is big enough and slip it over your head. All right, so you're gonna take the cotton piece of the mask and snug it up to your neck. Now, as you can see right now, this cord is hanging pretty low on the back of my neck. So to get it to fit tighter, move the cord up to like the base of your hairline. Hold the mask out in front of you like so. Then, grabbing the ties, pull out 
straight to the side. And as you're going to see, the side of the mask is going to start to gather. Like that. You should feel it tight on the back of your neck. Take the ties, pull them straight back, and secure the mask in place. Now the recommendation in the last video was to leave the ties 50 to 60 inches long. Once you determine the fit of this mask, if you're making it for family members, you definitely can leave them a lot um, shorter than that. This is just so they fit more people if you're donating them to a hospital. So as you can see, I have the mask on. There is no big gaps in the side. It's snug, but not too tight on the back of my neck and it is tied securely. Now you can go ahead and take the little piece of metal in the nose band, press on it a little bit so it gives you a tighter fit right here. And that's how I make this mask fit so tightly on my face. So hopefully that kind of clears up how to put it on to obtain a tighter fit. Now I'm going to show you how to take the mask off. This was another question people were like, how do you get that off over your head? without contaminating everything else. So now I'm gonna show you how to do that. So grab the ties, and give it a pull. Grab a hold of the ties, straight out and down. Take the cotton portion of the mask and pull it out away from you. This gives you a huge loop so you can easily slip it over your head. Now it can be thrown in the wash. One recommendation I would have if you're um, washing these is to take the two loose ends of the tie and kind of tie them in a knot. This is just gonna help so the cording doesn't slip through when they're being washed. Um, another good tip that somebody said was to put these in a garment bag when you're washing them and that will also help um, as well. So another question that I got was about the metal in the nose band. People were saying that they couldn't find the gardening wire or if they're not leaving their house, if there was any other recommendations they could use in place of that. And a lot of people have said pipe cleaners, but then some people were concerned that when you wash this mask over and over again, the pipe cleaner is gonna rust. Um, so the solution I came up with for that problem was to Cut the pipe cleaner the appropriate size of your mask. Insert the pipe cleaner in through the filter pocket and slide it up to the top of the mask. The top of the mask is going to be the part with the open ties. Snug that pipe cleaner up as tight as you possibly can and stitch about a three inch seam in the center here. This is going to leave an opening on the side of about an inch here and an inch here. So that pipe cleaner can be easily removed through either of these side pockets up through the filter. So it can be replaced if it breaks or if you feel better um, removing it when you're washing it, that can be done easily and it's not a big deal. Um, I really like the pipe cleaner suggestion. Pipe cleaners are nice and soft, um, but people were just really worried about rust. So that is my recommendation for the bridge of the nose. Uh, another question I had is people were asking about the diameter of the rope that I said I used um, and wondering if it was actually 3 16 So these are actually the packages that I was able to get at my local hardware store that it's kind of hard to see because it's so light. Um, this is Blue Hawk brand and it's 3 16 inch synthetic clothesline. So this is the 3 16 inch synthetic clothesline material. Um, they did also have this 5 30 seconds inch um, paracord rope and it came in a lot of different colors in a package of about 50 feet. Now I've heard people using this as well. I would say if you have any of these items already on hand at your house and you don't have to leave your house to get them or you can order them on Amazon. Um, do that. Um, paracord seems to be working great for a lot of people. Um, I've also heard people recommending um, shoelaces from their shoes, 
drawstring cording that comes out of sweatshirts and sweatpants whatever you have on hand if you can use it and it feels comfortable when you're wearing it ribbon works very well um, also but it can be kind of expensive um, so those are the things that I've used that seem to be working well um, another question that I got from a lot of people was when are you going to come out with the children's size of this mask um, and to that I have to say I made one that was a 9 by 7 for my six-year-old and it fit her great um, an easy way to construct a pattern for your child their size and their needs is to take a eight and a half by eleven piece of printer paper cut it down to the nine inch by seven inch side take the piece of paper with the long end facing up and place it kind of over their face you can kind of see where the piece of paper is going to hit and do the same thing for the bottom now my suggestion would be to take this piece of paper and cut it down about a half an inch for every single adjustment that you're going to make until you achieve the size that is going to fit your child best keeping in mind that when you actually sew these and put them together you have a seam allowance so you're going to lose depending on if you're doing a quarter inch seam or a half an inch seam you're going to lose some of the size there so that is the easiest suggestion I have for making a pattern instead of just cutting a bunch out for kids that are nine by seven um, now if you're making these for donation nine by seven is a good standard size it seems to fit um, a lot of kids the best but again it's going to depend on where they're being donated to or who they're being used for so um, that's my suggestion for kids. So I hope this video was helpful to most of you who um, are having a lot of the same questions and concerns about these masks. Again, these masks are not going to protect you from a respiratory illness. Check the description box below if you have any other questions. Um, I'll put a link for the CDC guidelines down there and you can check that out. Um, I hope this video is really helpful for all of you that are new here. Welcome and thank you so much for the overwhelming amount of support. Um, I really appreciate the feedback and comments um, and I hope to see you guys in my next video.